Before we start this video, a large thank you to Saul, Brian, Maze, Atticus, Thomas, Espit, and Luke for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, today we're going to conclude our base jumping logic, so let's open up the player locomotion manager. Let's copy apply jumping velocity and let's head over to the FBX file of the animation, specifically where we want to apply our jumping velocity. For me, I'm going to use lift. I might change that though. Go to the FBX file, come down here to events and drop the tab down and click this little plus icon right here. And then inside the function space, just paste the event name and click apply. As long as the event is on a script, or the function rather, and it's public, and that script is on the object playing this animation, you will run this logic during the frame that you've placed that animation event. So I'm just going to say y velocity, because remember we're always applying our y velocity, dot y, is equal to math f squared, and let's write some logic in here. So we're going to make a new variable for the jump height. So we're going to say jump height, and then we're going to say times minus 2 times the gravity force, okay? So the goal here is to just basically, when you adjust this jump height, it will change how high we jump, quite simple. Now, let's go up to the top here and right under movement settings, I'm just going to make a new serializable field, float, I'm gonna call this jump height. I'm gonna initialize it at say four, that's probably way too high because that'll probably be almost four unity units, um, but we can change that later. And gravity force is giving me grief, did I spell that wrong? Gravity maybe? No, okay, so it's probably private. So let's save this and let's go to the character locomotion manager and let's just check and see if the gravity force variable is misspelled or if it is private. And yes, it is private. Let's change this to protected. So the player locomotion manager, which inherits from the character locomotion manager can now use that variable. And there we go, we're good to go. So let's save that now and let's go back over into the project and open up our player input manager. Let's make sure we're calling handle jump input and we are not. So let's go to handle all inputs right here and let's call that right below just right after handle sprint input. Good to go, let's save that, minimize this. We start up the game now and go into the scene. If I try to jump and it's not working, okay. Uh, so let's check our jump function. Let's go to attempt jump and you can see we're not performing an action. We have stamina, we are not jumping. Ah, I see the problem. Uh, so I forgot to put if is not grounded, I had is grounded. This should be if we are not grounded. So let's save that. And now if I go to the scene, I can jump. Yes, I can. So it's a bit stuttery, we're gonna fix that. Also though, I can't jump again. Why is this? Well, as you can see, our is jumping flag is never actually resetting. If I tick that off, you can see I can jump again. So you can reset this right here on the empty state like we did with everything else, and you should, but there's also another spot where we need to reset that, or we should rather, and I'll explain that in the future. I won't overload you with too much information right now. So let's just say false right here. Character.isJumping is equal to false when we get back to the empty state. Because as you can see here, it always goes back to the empty state after the jump end. Now, if I go in the scene, I can jump as much as I want. Now there is a bit of a stutter on this jump and that it has to do with where I'm applying my animation event. So I'm gonna delete apply jump velocity from the lift and I'm actually gonna to go to the start. I'm gonna go right where I see my feet are about to lift off of the ground. We'll say right here and that looks good. I'm gonna hit this plus icon here to add animation event or paste the old one, apply it. And now if I go back into the game and start this up, that jump looks a lot smoother. That is beautiful. Okay, cool. So we do have a problem though, and that is we can only jump up and down. By that I mean we're not getting any forward motion, and that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to jump. If we're just going up, we're gonna come back in the same spot where we actually initiate the jump. So let's change that. What we wanna do is make it so we actually move further forward depending on our speed leading up to the jump. So we have a roll direction and a movement direction here. Let's make a variable for a jump direction, but first let's make a header to keep it organized. So I'm gonna call this header jump, and I'm going to move my jump stamina cost under here. And I'm also gonna move jump height under here too. You could argue that's also a movement setting, but just to keep it clean, I'll put it under jump because that makes more sense to me. You don't need to do this, obviously. You just know by now that I'm kind of a stickler for this stuff. So let's make a private vector three for our jump direction. And the goal here is to make it so if we're sprinting, we go really far forward. If we're running, we go a little bit less further. And if we're walking, we go even less further. And if we're not moving at all, we just jump straight up and come back down. So. Uh, under the attempt jump here, let's say jump direction is equal to, and this is the exact same thing as our movement direction, we're gonna say player camera dot instance dot camera object dot transform dot forward. And then we're gonna multiply that by our vertical movement on our player input manager. And then we're gonna say jump direction times equals, or sorry, plus equals. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna use the uh, camera object dot right, and then use our horizontal input. So it's the exact same thing as before. We're just getting the direction basically based on our camera. 
So again, jump direction is equal to player camera dot instance dot camera object dot transpose forward times player input manager dot instance dot vertical input jump direction plus equals player camera dot instance dot camera object dot transform not right times player input manager dot instance dot horizontal input. And then we're going to say jump direction dot y is equal to zero because we only want the forward, backward, left and right. Don't want the up or down. And then we're going to say if player dot player network manager dot is sprinting dot value. Well, we want to basically give that the full send off. So we'll say jump direction is equal to times one. It's not changing at all. So full power, no decay here on the movement. Now, else if the player dot player input manager dot instance dot move amount is greater than 0 0.5, but we are not sprinting, then we know we have to be running. So I'm going to give that a decay amount of half. So I'll say jump direction times equals 0 0.5 F. And these are just my values, by the way, you can change these to whatever you want. I'm basically making it so if you're sprinting, you get the most distance. If you're running, you get half that distance. And I'm going to make it so if you walk, you get a quarter of the distance. So I'm going to say if you are greater than 0 0.5 move amount, we know then we are running jump direction times equals 0 0.5 F. Else if, if your move amount is less than or equal to 0 0.5, then we know you are walking. So we're going to say jump direction times equals 0 0.25 F. And that looks good. Now we need to check to see if we have any movement at all. So first I'm going to make some comments here. If we are sprinting, jump direction is at full distance. And then I'm going to say if we are running it's at half distance and if we are walking it's at a quarter distance and these are just values that i like you can change these if you want for example you can make it so if you're running you get 75 percent of the distance this is just what i landed on i like it the most so feel free to edit this as you see fit okay so let's make a check first too uh, we want to say if our jump direction does not equal vector 3.0 then we do these further checks so we can say if jump direction does not equal vector 3.0 open up some brackets, and then we just place all these if statements inside of here. And then we can say else right below that. So let's paste this in here. We can come below here and just say else. And actually, we actually don't even need to say else. Never mind. This should be fine the way it is. Um, this should just make it so we're stationary if we um, if we jump and we're not moving. So let's go up here now and minimize that and minimize that function. And then right below handle grounded movement, I'm going to make a private void for handle jumping movement. Right. We actually, we can say jumping forward movement, but I'm just going to say jumping movement to keep the naming conventions the same. It's just going to basically propel us forward, depending on the speed uh, that we are when we're jumping. So if player dot is jumping and only if we're jumping player dot character controller dot move, and then we're going to use our newly created jumping direction times. And for now, I'm just going to give it a running speed variable times time dot delta time, but I'll make a variable for this in a moment, but I just want to show you that it works first. So let's save that. And remember, if we're, oh, let's also add it to handle all movement. If we're sprinting, we get the full value. If we're running, we get half the value. And if we're walking, we get a quarter of the value. So let's save that now. And if I go into the game, you can see I can jump and I'm going straight back down. I have no movement. That works. Now, if I'm running, I get a bit of forward movement. That works. And now if I'm sprinting, I get a lot of forward movement and that works. But did you catch that? There's a little bit of a slide. Remember how I said earlier, we actually should put the character dot is jumping somewhere else. So we need to keep on empty because if you get knocked out of an animation, so animation cancel before it gets a chance to get to end, then it's good because you're always going to go back to empty. So you should keep it there too. But we also want to end the is jumping on this end so we don't slide and move uh, when we land. So let's create a reset is jumping script and attach it to this. And then we can actually copy everything from the reset action flag and paste it here. We're using on state enter again. So while I do that, I'm just going to comment over this and explain why one more time. Basically, we're sliding because the character is jumping, never resets to false until we get to the empty, but it should reset when we get to the jump end. So that will halt our movement the second our feet touch the ground. Now, let's head our namespace and let's delete everything except for character dot is jumping is equal to true. So that's all you should have here on reset is jumping. Now, why are we keeping it on the reset action flag too? Well, let's say you get attacked in midair and never make it to the jump end state then when you get back to the empty state, it will end there too. So it's just a fail safe basically. So you want to keep it here on the reset action flag as well. You could remove it, but I would not recommend it. All right, let's save that. Let's go back into the game here and preview it. I jump straight up, come back down. Cool. I do a run and jump and you can see here, I stop right when I touch the ground, I can no longer move, no sliding, come back here. And now I do a sprinting jump and I should go even further and yep, perfect. It stops right there. No sliding. All right, cool. So, this is working as intended, but let's add one more thing. You can see here, if I just 
Basically, if I'm in the air, I want to make it so I can have a free falling movement. And some games don't do this. Elden Ring does. I like it. It gives you more control of your character. So let's go to the player locomotion manager. And basically, all this is going to do is allow us a little bit of movement in any direction while we're falling. You don't have to do this, but I think it adds a lot of control of the game. It feels cool. So private void handle free fall movement. Now, this is going to be a lot more subtle than your regular movements. You don't want to give it too much control or else you can just kind of zip around in the air and it feels kind of silly. So under handle all movement, add handle free fall movement as a function. And inside here, we're going to simply say if player is not grounded, then let's do some logic. Think of this as the opposite of handle grounded movement. This is handling the movement whilst you're not grounded. So free falling. Next, we're going to make a vector three variable in here. Call this free fall movement. Actually, let's call it free fall direction to keep it uh, in the same naming convention style. Then we're going to say free fall direction is equal to. Can you guess what's going to happen here? Player camera dot instance dot transform dot forward times player input manager, and then you're going to use your vertical input again. Then do the same thing for the horizontal input and just add it to the direction. So you could say free fall direction plus equals, or you could say free fall direction is equal to free fall direction plus. It's all the same, shorthand or not. And now what we're going to do while I type this again, just do some explanation, is we're basically going to allow a very subtle movement in the forward, backwards, left or right directions while we are falling. And that gives, again, a sense of control over the character. And a lot of games use this. Some games don't. I quite like it. So free fall direction dot y is equal to zero. And then right below here, we can simply say player dot character controller dot move. And then we pass the free fall direction multiplied by for now the walking speed, but I'll make a variable for that in a second times time dot delta time. And actually, before I move on, let's make two variables now, one for the walking speed or one for the free fall speed, sorry, and one for the jumping movement speed. So you can see how we're using running speed in its place. I want to give it its own variable. So if for some reason you want the forward motion of jumping to be different than your running variable, which is pretty likely then we can do that. So under jump, let's make a float for jump forward velocity. I quite like that at what it was. So I'm going to match the running speed at say five. And then let's make one for the free falling velocity. And again, I quite liked what it was. I think it matched my walking speed, which is two. So I'll just say two as well. And actually, now that I'm typing this out, I'm not going to call it velocity. I'm going to call it speed. So it matches the naming conventions. And that pleases me. Okay. That looks good. And now let's replace these down here. So running speed here under handle jumping movement would now be jump forward speed and walking speed under the handle free fall movement would now be free falling speed. And that looks good. Let's save that and make sure we call our handle free fall movement. If you haven't already, we've already done that though, I believe. So let's go into the scene view here. Now I'm going to make a little platform. So I'm just going to create an empty game object under my construct, call it platform. And I'm going to untick this little hand icon in the scene so I can actually grab stuff from the construct. And I'm just going to grab a cube here, duplicate it, but take it out of this so it's not parented under the walls because I want to parent it under my platform. And I'm just going to kind of like make some simple geometry here. The goal is just to make a little platform I can jump onto and jump off. And I'm doing this so I can show you the free falling movement does work. And of course, it's cool to have something to jump onto just to test your jump and to jump off of to get a feel for your game. So I encourage you just to basically make a simple platform yourself. I'm going to duplicate a plane here on it, and then kind of lower its size. So yeah, I'm just showing you basically what I'm doing. I'm not going to show you me making the whole platform. You can go off and make your own. Just make some simple structure where you can test your jumping um, if you would like. So I'm going to edit these transforms and I'm just going to drag this over here and I will be right back momentarily. Okay, platform done. Going to drag all these objects under the platform. There we go. Save that. Lock the hand again so I can't touch these things in the scene. Accidentally click them. And that looks good. So it's just a simple platform here. And you can see I can actually jump pretty high. It's about four unity units. And if I jump off here, you can see, well, actually, you can't probably see the uh, the falling velocity. So I'll, I'll make sure it's very simple and easy to see. I'm actually jumping there. So I'm going to create a cube in the scene and drag it up. I'm not going to jump off this cube. I'm just going to walk off of it. So basically, I'm not getting any jumping velocity moving me forward. So I'm going to drag my character up and just walk straight off. And you can see I'll actually be able to move while I'm in the air quite a bit. And I land it quite a bit further than where the cube is. Okay, that actually feels really good. So I'm liking how this turned out a lot. So you can jump around here and you can adjust these settings to your liking. Obviously, the jump height is quite high, much higher than Elden Rings. So you're going to want to lower that a lot if that's what you're aiming for. Also, just to show you one last time too, if I just come over here and jump stationary in the air, you can see that even though if I don't actually move while I'm jumping, so I'll just jump straight up here, I can actually move my character right or I can move him left or I can move him like backwards or forward. 
And that is the free falling velocity coming into play there. So if you were just to fall straight off of a cliff, you still have some control over your character, uh, albeit it's very slow movement. And you can also obviously adjust those values as you see fit. You can even make it so you have it decay over time if you'd like, so you can basically move for the first little bit of the, of the free fall, but then not at all. If you learned something, please leave a like and a comment. I know I sound like a broken record, but it does actually help out the series so, so much. So as always, guys, thank you for tuning in, and a special thank you to my patrons. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. I will see you guys next week, where we're actually going to start adding in some effect systems, basically taking damage and giving our character a health pool. I hope you all have a lovely weekend. I will see you then.